Next question is from Grant Satterthwaite. If isometrics don't build muscle, what is their utility in training? Yeah, Who said they don't build muscle? Exactly. I know. <laughs> Who said that? Let's fix that first. Yeah. Isometrics build muscle. All forms of muscle contraction contribute to muscle growth. Now, some more than others. But that doesn't mean you only should focus on one because the others have no value. They all have value. But here's the value of isometrics. First of all, they do build muscle. Yeah, there's many studies that prove that. Yeah, you way. will build muscle with isometrics. Not to the extent you will with like full range of motion training. But one of the benefits of isometrics is I can focus on a specific range of motion. If I'm weak at the bottom of a squat, I can really focus on that bottom position of the squat. If I really want to connect to a muscle, isometrics really are effective at allowing me to connect to specific muscles. It's also not as damaging. Like I can go high intensity isometrics and it's not going to require the same recovery that you know traditional kind of resistance training is going to do. So isometric, here's the deal. Everybody's always asking, what can I add to my routine to make it more effective? Now, so long as you don't overtrain, isometrics is usually one of the best answers. Yeah. You can add isometrics to almost any routine. You'll take this much more recovery, but you'll get this much more in return. Well, so yeah, and the irony, it's like it it spans all the way from the very, very beginner to the advanced. Yes. Like there's benefits all the way across the board. And it's it's kind of funny that they said that you don't build any muscle when in fact any muscle contraction, whether it's like eccentric, concentric, or isometric, either one of those is gonna, you know, actually actively stimulate the muscle in, in order to produce, you know, some kind of an output. So, you know, it's gonna stimulate the it's gonna affect the muscle, which in fact, if you do them you know, enough times it's going to help them grow and develop uh, as well. But yeah, isometrics, I mean, I think it's just because it's just not as popular, not as familiar. It's not mm -hmm. as sexy. Um, you know, people don't like to focus on that portion, uh, you know, of contraction very often, but there's so many other benefits to it that uh, get you really connected to the central nervous system. It actually, you know, acts as a way to alleviate pain, uh, almost uh, instantaneously, yeah. which is a very amazing feature of it. Uh, and then building muscle, of course, is another you know huge uh, part of that. Process. Well, I think it's because in the moment, all right, initially, in, in, if you compare it directly to the eccentric or concentric portion of the exercise, it doesn't build as much. So I think, and it, it and and I say that like in the moment, meaning like you know what the. Uh, What's that thing that you and Jessica always say, Sal, the, your type one fun and your type two fun? Yeah. You have like fun that is like fun while you're yeah. in the moment. Like think of that. Like, it feels like more work. Yeah. And then, then you have like type two where it's like you get added benefits later on. Like that's how I think of like the isometrics. The isometrics may not feel like or does not seem like you are building as much muscle as full range of motion exercises in the moment, but it has this great carryover later on to the points that you're making, Justin, right now with like CNS. Like your ability to contract like that, get a stronger, better contraction, recruit more muscle will only in turn make you better at your full range of motion yep. exercises later on, right. which will, will only make you build more muscle later on. So not training it because you think it doesn't add as much mu muscle or build as much muscle as a full range of motion exercise doesn't mean that it doesn't have tremendous benefit. This is another example too of how studies can suck sometimes. If you took a study that showed these people only did isometric contractions for six weeks, these people only did concentric, these people only did eccentric, which one built the most muscle right. over the course of and six you're days? you're just looking at size or something. Yeah, you're going to look at yeah. your, your in by itself in a study for six to eight weeks, you're right. The eccentric and concentric full range of motion is going to probably beat out for total muscle gain than the isometric. Yeah, but the isometric still built muscle. Right. You know, when you have yeah. all three contractions, concentric, which is the lifting, right? Eccentric, which is the lowering, and then isometric, which is this, it's not moving, but you're contracting hard, either pushing against an immov immovable object or just doing it intrinsically. If you compare all three, eccentric builds the most muscle. Second place would be concentric. Third place would be isometric. Right, yeah. But what we don't, what people forget is they all built muscle. Yeah. That means if you add them to each other, you get this cumulative it's effect. It's a compounding. Yeah. That's yes. what I'm saying by that, right? Yes. So it's like, even though in a study like that, if we we're comparing, you go, oh, well, I'm not going to waste my time with that one because it's the third most beneficial when it comes yeah. to building muscle. But that doesn't tell the whole story of what the carryover you're getting from training. Yeah, by the way, bodybuilders have a long history of isometric training. In the 70s, Arnold used to talk about doing it to sharpen and harden his muscles. Bodybuilders today still do a lot of isometric training. Now, they don't talk about it in their workouts because they don't consider posing as a part of the workout. But yeah. bodybuilders are posing constantly, especially before competition. What well, is posing? It's all isometrics. And by the way, 
for people like, oh, posing's easy. No, it's not. No. When you're on stage and you're doing a front double bicep, you don't just flex your arms. You are contracting and controlling everything. Strongman's a better example. Even even better. Right? I mean, they got to carry objects in an isometric position. I mean, they're moving with weight so a lot of times, but also, too, they have events where they're actually just holding on to really heavy objects that are pulling them apart, and they have to, like, squeeze as hard as possible. There's lots of events centered around just if they can keep <laughs> their, their, their position, you yeah. know, intact and, and, and strong in that position. So, you know, isometric play a huge role hey if you enjoyed that clip you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here and be sure to subscribe